Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. <clears throat> and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts to beseech thee.
The epistle is written in the 11th chapter of the first epistle of Blessed Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians, beginning at the 23rd verse. Brethren, I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night at which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth, eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh condemnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Here endeth the epistle. Christ became obedient for our sakes unto death. In the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him. And given him the name which is above every name. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For, he, <clears throat> for him that hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom, ha whom he hath sent. They said, Therefore unto him, What signs showest thou then, that we may see and believe thee? What doest thy work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven, and giveth life unto the world. Then they said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Please be seated. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I should first announce that uh, Bishop Craig Bodrow's mother um, went into hospital today and is in extremis and was given the last rites of the church this evening. So, of course, Bishop Bodrow is in Halifax at his cathedral offering the Holy Mass tonight. So we keep him and Angela and all the family in our prayers and particularly 
for his mother, Faye. Tonight in this cathedral church, we join our fellow Christians around the world to recall the events of that first Monday, Thursday, so many centuries ago. With them, we now enter into the solemnity of the Paschal mystery, the passion, death, and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. As Holy Scripture records, in the last hours of his earthly life, Jesus gathered his apostles in a large upper room to celebrate with them the Passover. I had the privilege in 2020 of standing in that very room in Jerusalem. In the course of that meal, Jesus donned the clothes of a servant. He washed the feet of his apostles. Then taking the ritual bread and wine of the Seder meal, he instituted the Holy Eucharist, the Eucharist of his precious body and blood, celebrating once for all the Last Supper and the First Holy Communion. Through our Lord's words and deeds over these next three days, he would accomplish the Paschal mystery of man's redemption. He would inaugurate the new and everlasting covenant between God and his people, the new Israel, Christ's holy church. In accordance with the Father's will, our Lord chose the time of Passover to fulfill what he had first announced at Capernaum, the giving of his body and blood for the life of the world. By celebrating the Last Supper at Passover, Jesus gave that ancient feast a new and eternal meaning. It would be the passing over of the Son of God and Son of Man from life to death to life again forever destroying the power of sin and death over mankind with its ancient curse of the grave. At the Last Supper, our Lord gave... I want to welcome our guests in, please. Let them in. Okay. At the Last Supper, our Lord gave new meaning to the ancient ritual of Passover, alternating the meaning and significance of the feast by the words he spoke as he shared with the apostles the broken bread, the cup of wine. This is my body given for you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you for the remission of sins. Then having shared the broken bread, his body, and the cup of wine, his blood, he said, do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me is a powerful mystical commandment, something more than the mental recollection or commemoration. So I've said before, we have no English words to say what our Lord said in Hebrew. They don't exist. To do this in remembrance of me is to bring the events of the past which are remembered into the very present moment and the taking of us, the rememberers, back to the past, to the present, as those events took place in that upper room. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this to recall me. Do this to call me back when by this holy, this sacred action, we remember, we call our Lord back to be with us. He comes actively to bring us into the living touch with all that he has done for us. It is a solemn and joyful mystery. And by it, we are present in that upper room where two or three are gathered in my name, said the Lord. I am in their midst. Faithful to our Lord's command, the church continues this through the centuries, proclaiming his passion and death until he comes again. The first announcement, as I've said, of the Holy Eucharist made by Jesus at Capernaum 
divided his disciples, just as the announcement of his passion and cross scandalized them. In the face of the Pascha mystery, many cried out, this is too hard, we cannot listen to it. And then we are told in scripture, they turned back, they turned away from Jesus and followed him no longer. In response to those scandalized who said they could no longer follow this Jesus, he turns to his apostles and asks them a very simple yet fundamental question. Will you also go away? The apostle Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the life, the words of everlasting life. Jesus' question to his apostles echoes through the ages, as does his question in the garden later that same evening, will you not stay awake one hour with me? He and he alone has the words of eternal life. He and he alone is the savior of the world. At the table in the upper room that first Monday, Thursday, Jesus offered himself in will to the Father. The next day, Good Friday, he made good indeed what he had willed in prayer. Upon the cross, Jesus gave himself to the Father for us and in turn gave himself to us for the Father. He was obedient even to the cross and unto death. As a result of these Paschal mysteries, Jesus remains forever the great high priest who offers eternal sacrifice. He is forever the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is priest and victim. He is sacrifice and savior. The cross, the altar, the key of salvation. From the beginning, the church has been faithful to our Lord's command. We read in the Acts of the Apostles that the church devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. From that first Monday, Thursday, on down to this day today, the celebration of the Holy Eucharist has been and remains the center of the church's worship and life. Together with the sacrament of baptism, the Holy Eucharist is fundamental to the life and salvation of every Christian, without which one can neither claim to be a Christian nor be assured of salvation. That is why Christians throughout the world gather tonight, this holy night, to remember, to receive, and to give thanks. Take this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. The right hand of the Lord hath a preeminence. The right hand of the Lord bringeth mighty things to pass. I shall not guide the wind and do all the works of the Lord. Thee we adore, O hidden Savior, thee.
receive, O Holy Father, and Almighty, everlasting God, the spotless hopes which I, thy unworthy servant, offer unto thee, the living and true God, for my unjust sins, offenses, and negligences, for all who stand here round, and also for all faithful Christians, both living and departed, let me enter them, and may avail for salvation unto life eternal. Amen. We offer unto thee, O Lord, the cup of salvation, humbly beseeching thy mercy, that in the sight of thy divine majesty, Send before thee the sweet smelling savor for our salvation, to that of the whole world. Amen. In a humble spirit and with a contrite heart, and we accept of thee, O Lord. And so let our sacrifice be offered on such this day that be pleasing to thee, O Lord God. Amen. Call it off on the Lord's mighty eternal God, and bless this sacrifice made ready for thy holy name. Brethren, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God the Father Almighty. The Lord receive the sacrifice of thy hands to praise the glory of his name, both for our benefit and that of all his holy church. Amen. Grant we beseech thee, O Lord, Holy Father Almighty, everlasting God, that he may render our acceptable our sacrifice acceptable in thy sight, as on who on, as on this day commanded his disciples, saying, Do this in remembrance of me. Even the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. 
we beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Charles our King, and to all that are put in authority under him, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially to me, thine unworthy servant, and those bishops in communion with me, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and living word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those for whom our prayers are desired. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. Beseeching thee to grant them a place of refreshment, light, and peace. And we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, chiefly the glorious and most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, the holy patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, St. John the Evangelist, and all thy saints, beseeching thee to give us grace, that rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow their good examples, and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, to make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them, that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty.
that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who having loved his own which were in the world, loved them unto the end, and on the night before he suffered, did institute these holy mysteries, that we, receiving the benefits of his passion and being quickened by his resurrection, might be made partakers of the divine nature and be filled with all the fullness of God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and it institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take heed, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father, almighty world without end. Amen. Let us pray.
as our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. O Lamb of God, now take us away, O Son of the world. Have mercy upon us. Presume to come and to this thy table, o merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, Son of Mary, Father of the Father, and Father of the Holy Spirit, Ghost, thy death is but life unto the world. Deliver me by this, thy most sacred body, and blood from all manner of grace of the every day. Now look through about to thy commands, and suffer me to be separated. To partake in thy body and blood, O Lord Jesus Christ, which I have waited for some to receive, though not to my judgment or condemnation, but that thy goodness fail me, forgive and protection of the soul of my God, who livest and reigns with the Father in the universe, one God, through all ages, world without end. I receive the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy. 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 The Lord Jesus, after that he had supped with his disciples, and had washed their feet, said unto them, Know ye what I, O Lord, am thus to have done to you? I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done unto you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sin of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Thank you. 
They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And also far from my help and from the words of my complaint. O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. And in the night season also I take my rest. And thou continuest holy, O thou worship of Israel. Trust in thee and were not confounded. But as for me, I am a woman, no man. A very scorn of men and the outcast of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out their lips and shake their heads, saying, Saying he trusted in God that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him. But thou art he that took me from the womb. Thou wast my hope when I hanged yet upon my mother's breast. I have been left to me since I was born. Thou art my God, even from my mother's womb. Oh, go not from me, for trouble is hard at hand, and there is none to help me. Of the congregation. 